Hello everyone and welcome to this animation on using email and email contexts inside of PrintShop Mail Connect Designer. In this animation we'll take a look at creating the email context and personalizing it with your own data and image and we'll also take a look at what's necessary to send this email to your customers. Now the first step into using email inside of PrintShop Mail Connect is to add the appropriate context. Adding an email context means that you're adding a second output type to your document and both the print and email context can live together inside the same template. So let's start by adding it. When you add a new context to an existing document, you'll get essentially the same window that you would if you were creating a new template. Now in terms of specifically the email context, we can start with a static subject along with a couple of different little options on how the default template will look. So what I'll do is just change the layout so as to not have a sidebar but I'm going to leave the other options pretty much as is and then click on finish. Obviously this looks a little bit boring in terms of email, but you can of course personalize it 100% just like you would the print context. Now as a side note, in the future you'll have the ability to add a context using our template wizards so you'll have a bit of a prettier start than what you see here. And this also means that if you create a new template and you're using the template wizards, then you can simply use the better email ones and then add your print template to that. Now when you add a new email context, the first thing that you might notice is that at the bottom left corner in the scripts pane, we're adding a new script, which is for the email recipient. Now by default, this is looking for a field called email2. We need to change this to reflect a field in our data that has the email address of your client. In our case, it's just called email. This simply sets the recipient for each of the emails that will be sent by Connect when we generate the email output. Please note that you also have the ability to change the subject along with adding a carbon copy and blind carbon copy directly here inside of these scripts. All of these are text scripts, meaning you can add many different fields along with a prefix and suffix to build an actual subject to your email that will be personalized also. So this will just say, Lena, we have a message for you. So you know that the person will receive it and see their name and know it's not spam, for example. Now, when we go into preview mode, even before adding of any of the content, you can see that at the top of this screen, we have a section that displays the two, the CC and the subject. Let me zoom that in for a second. So now we can see that the email is correct, as well as the subject that is personalized. Now let's add a couple of design elements so that we have something that is similar to the print context. Now obviously we could rewrite everything here and redo the formatting, but there is a better way. You can switch from one context to the other simply by double clicking on the appropriate section. So in the case of the email, the section is always called content, the default one, and in print it's always called section one. Now what we could do is copy what I have here, move it to the email context, and it would appear exactly the same when we generate output, all of the placeholders, the address, the name, and the signature at the bottom would still work dynamically with no problem. And this is just done via copy paste. Select the whole text, control C, paste it in the other one. However, there is a better way, because what if the contents of my message changes and I want to adjust it for both email and print? I would need to edit it in both places? Uh, no, not really. Because what we can do is create a snippet. We've already seen snippets before with the address uh, at the top, so we see the snippets on the left, and we can create a new one very easily. So once you have 
any amount of elements selected. So we here we have the paragraphs and the header and everything. You can right click on this contents and click on create snippet. Now there are two types of snippets. One that is created from the contents and does not keep a link. And we also have the shared content, which means that the actual contents is moved to the snippet and we are only left with a reference to that snippet. So now all we need to do is to go in the email context, remove the contents that's here, and drag our snippet directly onto the page. Again, we want to use the insert as shared contents so that the link is maintained. So if I go in preview mode, the address, the name, and everything remains dynamic and exactly the same. Well, not quite. You might notice that the styling is different. That is because the style sheet between the email and the print output is not shared by default, meaning the style sheet for print, if I double click on it, now essentially, if we just remove the color from the first heading, this will go back to being red. So very, very short explanation. The style sheet for the whole document is called context all styles. And there's also individual style sheets for the HTML email as well as the print. Earlier when I did the style for the H1, it was for the whole document, but the specific one in the HTML email overwrote it. Now there's a point here to be made with shared content. The first thing is we have a shared snippet and if I change anything in the snippet here, so if I add a paragraph and I go back to my print section, this paragraph also appears because the content is shared. Now there are other things that are shared. For instance, the logos and the signatures are also shared between the contexts. And I can add the logo easily to the header and that will give me uh, the same logo that it's used for both. And now if I switch the logo to another one, it's also going to appear in both contexts. Now, please note that creating email HTML is a little more delicate than creating print output. Email clients are very finicky and most of them don't support a lot of the modern uh, HTML techniques that we use in Connect. So for example, you can't use position box or floating boxes inside of email. Mostly everything needs to be done in tables. We strongly advise that if you're going to create email content in Connect, that you use existing email tools such as MailChimp or other similar tools in order to generate the uh, HTML that goes into your email and then just slightly adjust it to your needs if you need to inside of Connect. And then simply add the variable data from Connect using that design. This will ensure a greater compatibility with different email clients because Microsoft Outlook, Gmail, Hotmail, and Apple uh, will not show the email in the same way and will not, will not support the same uh, technologies. So it's better to use tools that are existing that takes this into consideration. Now, what about sending the email? Well, it's very simple. There are two separate dialogues that are almost identical in Connect. The first one is send test email. So when you're in send test email, essentially what you're doing is sending the email back to yourself. It never goes out to a client. So you can fill this in with the information that you would normally do. So your name and your email and the two will be where all of the test emails will be sent. Essentially, the two script that reads the email from the record does not run. Now you can also choose which records will be sent. So in my case, I have 12 emails that are ready to be sent. If I select all, that'll send all 12, again, to the two email that's set above, or I can use selections. That can be one comma two comma three. 
and that'll send the first three records. You can also use ranges or combination of both in order to choose which email records you want to send. So this would send six records. Now at the bottom you have the outgoing email settings, meaning the SMTP server that's going to be used to send the emails. You want to contact your IT department to know what the SMTP server is and whether or not you use authentication to send email through that server. Now there's one last little detail I want to show you and it's one of the cool ones. Because we're using a single template with two contexts, the email and the print, we have a special feature that we can offer that might make your life very easy. Print context as a PDF document. What this means is that when you click on that finish button and you're sending the email, the print context for each of these records is converted to a single PDF and attached to each email that you're sending. The contents could be different, it can be the same, it can be more information or promotional uh, data that is personalized, but, but essentially you're sending whatever the print context is as an attached PDF, and I think that's pretty cool. And one last note before I let you go, a couple of things about the email context. It does not support JavaScripts. Most email clients will not support custom fonts. And the medias and master pages are only for print context, so they have no bearing or influence on the email output. Now the other dialog to send email is the actual production send. When you click on the other button, you do not have the to field because this will use the actual email inside of each of your records. Now again, you have the selection, but normally you would send all and the rest of the information is identical. Now please note that if your field where you set the email address is empty, no email will be sent for this specific record, but the rest of the records will receive the email. Also note that any bounce message, so if the email is invalid or the mailbox is full, will always be sent to the email address that you specify at the top. Also, you can set some of the email settings and parameters inside of Window, Preferences. So here you can set the default name and email address that you want when you click on that Send Email or Send Test Email button. If you have a Litmus account, you can enter it here and you can choose that to be sent. Just Google for Litmus, it's a very cool tool to test your email. And in terms of SMTP, you can put your uh, real SMTP and the test server, if you have one, right here and then select that in the dropdown when you click on send email. We also support the use of Mandrill for email sending. Again, just go on mandrill.com or Google it and you'll learn all about this email tracking software that is beautiful and is also uh, free for your first, I think, 12,000 email sends. So you might want to look into that if you want email tracking.